Hi, my name is Amanda Zeba. Welcome to my channel, Learning with the Word Nerd, another first chapter Friday video. Today I'm going to be sharing the first chapter of another Newbery Award winning book with you, The Invention of Hugo Cabret. Now this book is amazing for a bunch of different reasons, but the one thing that makes it really stand out is that it is told in both pictures and words. Brian Selznick is an amazing writer and also illustrator, and so he's combined both of his talents to tell a story in a really unique way. As you're reading this book, you will come across several clusters of pages that don't actually have any words on them at all. As a, a speedier reader, um, I was tempted to just quickly page through these to get to the words and carry on with the story, but I want to warn you not to do that because if you go through the pictures too fast, you're going to miss important details for the story. When I read this book aloud with my students, they each had their own copy, and what we did was every time we got to a picture, we had two different individuals say a sentence out loud as if they were the author. This really forced us to slow down and pay attention to those details so we didn't miss important things in the story. So as I'm reading aloud to you today, I will do that so that you can see what it looks like and continue to do it as you read the story on your own. All right, The Invention of Hugo Cabret, written and illustrated by Brian Selznick. A brief introduction. The story I'm about to share with you takes place in 1931 under the roofs of Paris. Here you will meet a boy named Hugo Cabret who once long ago discovered a mysterious drawing that changed his life forever. But before you turn the page, I want you to picture yourself sitting in the darkness, like the beginning of a movie. On screen, the sun will soon rise and you will find yourself zooming toward a train station in the middle of the city. You will rush through the doors to a crowded lobby. You will eventually spot a boy amid the crowd, and he will start to move through the train station. Follow him, because this is Hugo Cabret. His head is full of secrets, and he's waiting for his story to begin. Professor H. Elko Frisbis. Part 1. Chapter 1. The Thief. It is night. A full moon rises in the sky. The moon is surrounded by stars. They are bright and together light up the night. They shine down on the city of Paris. The Eiffel Tower stands tall in the city landscape. The sun is rising. We can see more of the city. We are zooming in on a building. It looks busy. Many people are outside the building. Some are going in and carrying suitcases. Inside the building, it is very crowded. The building is made up of tall stone walls. There is a boy with long hair. He is looking over his shoulder. The boy is not carrying a suitcase. He is walking up the steps. The building is a train station. The boy is running through the train station. The boy is walking into a hallway. It looks like he is sneaking. The boy is creeping down the hallway. He is sliding along the wall, trying not to be seen. The boy is reaching for a vent or a grate. It looks very fancy. The boy is disappearing inside the grate. His shoes have holes in them. They must be very old. At the end of the hallway, there is a man. He is sitting at a booth. At the booth, there are many different kinds of toys. The man at the booth looks old and tired. The man has a beard and mustache. He also has eyes that look tired. In the reflection of the man's eye, there is a clock. It looks like it is almost 1.30. The clock is hanging on the train station wall. It looks big and very fancy. Behind the number five, we can see someone's face. This must be a very big clock. The boy is hiding behind the clock. He is looking down at the man in the booth. From his perch behind the clock, Hugo could see everything. He rubbed his fingers nervously against the small notebook in his pocket and told himself to be patient. The old man in the toy booth was arguing with the girl. She was about Hugo's age, and he often saw her go into the booth with
From his perch behind the clock, Hugo could see everything. He rubbed his fingers nervously against the snarl. From his perch behind the clock, Hugo could see everything. He rubbed his fingers nervously against the small notebook in his pocket and told himself to be patient. The old man in the toy booth was arguing with the girl. She was about Hugo's age, and he often saw her go into the booth with a book under her arm and disappear behind the counter. The old man looked agitated today. Had he figured out some of his toys were missing? Well, there was nothing to be done about that now. Hugo needed the toys. The old man and the girl argued some more, and finally she closed her book and ran off. The girl looked to be about the same age as Hugo. She had short hair. Thankfully, within moments the old man had crossed his arms in front of him and closed his eyes. Hugo crept through the walls, came out through an air vent, and hurried down the hall until he reached the toy booth. Nervously, he rubbed the notebook one last time, then cautiously lowered his hand around the wind-up toy he wanted. But suddenly, there was a movement from inside the booth, and the sleeping old man sprang to life. Before Hugo could run, the old man grabbed his arm. The little blue wind-up mouse Hugo had taken fell from his hand, skidded across the counter, and landed on the floor with a crack. Thief! Thief! The old man yelled down the empty hallway. Someone called the station inspector! At the mention of the station inspector, Hugo panicked. He twisted and tried to get away, but the old man pulled hard on his arm and wouldn't let go. I finally caught you. Now empty your pockets. Hugo growled like a dog. He was furious with himself for being caught. The old man squeezed tighter until Hugo was practically standing on his toes. You're hurting me. Empty your pockets. Reluctantly, one by one, Hugo pulled out dozens of objects, screws and nails and bits of metal, gears and crumpled playing cards, tiny pieces of clockworks, cogs and wheels. He pulled out a crushed box of matches and some small candles. You have one more pocket to go, the old man said. There's nothing in it. Then turn it inside out. I don't have anything of yours. Let me go. Where is the station inspector? The old man yelled down the hallway again. Why, he's he never around when he is needed. If the station inspector in his green uniform appeared at the end of the hallway, Hugo knew everything would be over. The boy struggled against the old man, but it was no use. Finally, his hand trembling, Hugo reached into his pocket and pulled out his small, battered cardboard notebook. The cover had been rubbed smooth. Still holding onto the boy's arm, the old man snatched the notebook away, setting it down out of Hugo's reach, opened it, and flipped through the pages. One page caught the old man's eye. Inside the notebook there were drawings. Some of the drawings were of gears and mechanical things. On one page, there was a man sitting at a desk. He looked like he was writing something. When you looked closer, you could see his insides were made up of gears. Maybe he was a robot. The robot's face was very pale and smooth. It had no hair. Give that back to me. It's mine, Hugo cried. Ghosts, the old man muttered to himself. I knew they would find me here eventually. He closed the notebook. The expression on his face changed rapidly from fear to sadness to anger. Who are you, boy? Did you draw these pictures? Hugo didn't answer him. I said, did you draw these pictures? Hugo growled again and spit on the floor. Who did you steal this notebook from? I didn't steal it. The old man grunted, and with a push, he finally let go of Hugo's arm. Leave me alone, then. Stay away from me in my toy booth. Hugo rubbed his arm and stepped backward, accidentally crushing the wind-up mouse he had dropped. The old man shuddered at the sound of the breaking toy. Hugo picked up the broken pieces and placed them on the counter. I can't leave without my notebook. It is no longer your notebook. It is mine, and I will do with it what I want. The old man waved Hugo's box of matches in the air. Perhaps I will burn it. No! The old man collected the contents of Hugo's pockets, including the notebook. He placed them into a handkerchief, tied it up, and covered it with his hands. Then tell me about the drawings. Who did them? Hugo said nothing. The old man slammed his fist down on the counter, shaking all the toys. Get out of here, you little thief! You're the thief! Hugo yelled as he turned and ran off. The old man yelled something after him, but all Hugo heard was the clicking of his own shoes echoing off the station walls.
And that's the end of chapter one. If you are loving the story as I am and want to read more, you can continue with The Adventure of Hugo Cabret by Brian Selznick. And also, if you check down in the description, I have some links to some great resources to help you uh, if you are a teacher sharing this book with your classroom. All right, come back again for another first chapter Friday video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Learning with the Word Nerd. See you later.